Hello everyone, this is Julie from August Birdsong, and I am bringing you the final um, walkthrough of my Medieval Garden um, collage book. And uh, it, you've, if you've been following this, you've seen it in various stages. Uh, so many of these things you'll have already seen, but this is, this is how it ended up. Uh, this is the front cover. And I added a little charm into the ribbon here. Um, something I haven't shown yet is the back cover here. And I just mounted this. Uh, this picture was one that was in a previous video where I was showing how I, I mount and distress the edges with old book pages. So the original was just, um, you know, something like like this with just the edging and you know nothing nothing fancy so just on a bigger scale what I did is um, I first put just some hard uh, craft cardstock behind it so I mounted this on a piece about the size of that inner panel and stitched it on uh, and then these were from a Spellbinders uh, die set and it's actually smaller. It's about the size of uh, this inner panel. And so what I did is I just made two of these uh, die cut frames and cut them on a diagonal right around there and then just pieced them together. So I ended up with four pieces. So I had this corner here, this corner there, and then ditto on the bottom. And then there's just a slight overlap here and a little bit there if you look at the X's, and on this side, of course, and then here. And basically, I just uh, mounted that then and stitched it on to that first initial just craft paper panel. And the frame is made out of just a die cut from an old cereal box. So it's it's just, you know, heavy duty cardstock, uh, if you think of a cereal box. And then all I did is distress it with um, some ground espresso and vintage photo. Um, you know, and I distressed it before I glued anything down. So I did all the distressing beforehand and then um, you know, mounted it in various stages, put a little glue under those overlap parts. Uh, there were a few places where maybe um, the die cut had a, you know, a stray bar or something as, you know, in the design. And I just trimmed those out to make it just sort of look as consistent as possible. Uh, but that's just a hint of, you know, something you can do if you're if your focal image is bigger than your die cut frame, uh, just try doing multiple die cuts of the frame and cut them apart and then just, you know, build it back up um, to the size you need. And then the final things I did, I just added a little cheesecloth here. And um, also these are, again, you've heard me talk about them. Uh, this is from a scrap man die set uh, called hinges and um, the pieces I used there let me find them if I have them in here they're just one of the the types of hinges and what I ended up doing here it is I ended up so this was like the original size of the die cut and this one doesn't have it uh, all the pieces popped out I actually need to rerun that but you can see size wise I just cut it apart here and then you know use two of these full size die cuts cut them apart and then just glued them down there and this one I need to actually run back through it uh, it didn't totally cut through all of it but of course this is a different design but once you you know pop out all the little in inner pieces here's another one so you just pop out I'll just show you with a few here okay uh, pop out those little things and I keep these because I can use those with some embellishing on something else uh, when I ran this die through I also used some wax paper 
that's what that little clear part is because sometimes the wax paper just helps with those real tiny, tiny little holes and, and swirls and stuff. Uh, it helps when you pull it, pull it off. It often will take all those details. So here you can see, this is just a half of this particular die cut. This one hasn't had everything popped out, but it's a half of it. So I just cut it in half, used this half in the four corners. And that's all I did. And then uh, used some perfect, perfect pearls. I think it was like bronze um, was the color to make it look like, you know, had some metal attachments. And then this is just a little cheesecloth. I tucked under um, the initial, the initial focal point page uh, before I glued on, you know, and stitched on everything else. So mainly putting those on just to hide a few of the places where there was some overlap with um, the, the frame and all cut down. And then I also just added some per perfect pearls uh, to the, the woman and the little girl in the picture. But so that's the back of it. And I'm gonna flip it over now. And it is a big, binder full of collage so here we go and by the end if you look at it this way you can see it's it's stuffed the nice thing though is you know this isn't a journal this is simply a, a decorated if you want to call it a book or a decorated binder um, it's sturdy and I can have this on display in the house you know like in the living room or something um, or on a bookshelf and just have it standing on its own and it holds its shape. If it was a little thinner, I might have bound it or, or put some ties. At this point, I'm just going to leave it um, as it is. But it is has a lot, a lot of layers. So here we have our walkthrough. Uh, again, if you've watched this series of videos, you're going to recognize a lot of it, but there are changes. I um, had this card in there um, in this. It's a thin pocket. It's a book page. I didn't make it to be the sturdiest of pockets, just to tuck some simple things in. Um, I could have made the hinges bigger and deeper and a, a sturdier paper behind the image if I really wanted to pack in some heavier duty things. This is just um, like a tag I made months ago. And again, like a lot of my stuff, I, I've been holding on to it and I figure one day I'll find a home for it. And this is where I decided to put it. Uh, here you have a, a Sizzix die cut by uh, Tim Holtz. It's the clock and I just cut it in half these colors you see are from a cereal box. Uh, I could have flipped it over and colored the other side, um, which is just like craft color, but I, I kind of liked the colors with the rest of the tag, so I kept it on that side. Um, and to make it fit the page, just did a, a partial of the round clock face. So that'll go in there. And then here you have, I might have to, Hold it up a little here. Here you have um, a page. This was a collage I had done um, fairly recently. I didn't even know for sure if I was going to use it in here, although I was hoping to. And I, I had some different, these are from uh, an embroidery uh, kit uh, of images from di digital images from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. And they were in the initial layering underneath and then you've seen me before build up the the focal point with the bird some more scrap man dies here flowers from dreams etc uh, which is another um, Etsy shop but she also Jen Bishop also has a, a dot com store uh, and the dot com store usually you can find a few more bargains uh, at that site. And this is just a kit that was like um, different ephemera and stuff uh, in it, like a bunch of flowers. 
I added, this is just a little tab that I had left over from an Artie Mays kit. Um, probably one of her like woodland ones, I think. And, or maybe Nature Walk. I know that's one of hers. And then all I did, I ended up stitching them down. Uh, so that in the flip then, let me get this centered. I want to be sure you're seeing it all. Uh, so then in the flip, um, you see both sides of it. And I also added the little eyelet. And this is just one of those, um, what do you call them? They're kind of like upside light bulb shapes. Uh, you can get through Ideology by Tim Holtz. And um, they're just little like safety pins and you just open them, put the beads on that you want, and then uh, you can close them like that. And with that, I always need to be watching flip outs and other things that might get in the way on the page or a page next to it. So I didn't put these on every page. Uh, this one here is, well, again, you saw this one earlier in another video as well as this one. <clears throat> the main difference is I had added some further embellishments, the black, again, to pick up the black in the chickadee, and again, the metal work over here uh, in that one. And this is just some uh, sari silk, a strip I tore, and then glued it down just to pick up the color in the flower. Uh, and a little bit here with this deer mouse. It's hinged. On a new page, well, it's the same base page, but this is different. This is something I did in the last few days. I had made this particular little panel here months ago. The birds and a lot of the background are from, um, it's a Tim Holtz, like, tissue paper roll. And it's, you know, kind of botanical with the birds. And so that's just decoupaged on. And it's covering, I decoupaged it with uh, a piece of paper from Medieval Mirage. And so some of this Medieval uh, stuff is from Medieval Mirage, and I just put it over that original page. So um, it was just one page, this shape of, of the Medieval Mirage, decoupaged some bits on it, Later here, I again put some die cuts. I cut these apart. These are flourishes, and they were, it, as one whole one, it was too big for the page. But I just cut it apart and pieced it in there. And then this is a quote from Poppiness uh, on Etsy, and it's I think it's one about gardening, from a set about gardening. I know a little garden close set thick with lily and red rose, where I would wander if I might from dewy dawn to dewy night, William Morris. So here's what I did that's a little different from other pages you've seen. Well, here's just some, uh, it's ribbon, you know, from Joann's, and then it flips up. So see how that flips. And I'm gonna move this here so you can see it good. This is the underside of that flip. So here it flips down, you have that, flips up, you have this. The thing to remember when you do one like this is that you want your design on this page to be uh, actually, if you look at the first one, it's upside down from the front page because when you do the flip, this needs to be upright. Okay, and so that's different. The front page, there's the upright version. And then that page, you know, normally, um, I'm trying to think if, uh, let's see here. Here's the, the bottom. The bottom on the front becomes the top on the flip up, if that makes sense. And let me just get that in there. And again, I added some of this. This was just a trim I actually found in um, like the clearance bin at Joann's. There was a certain amount, so got it real cheap. Uh, but it was, you know, it was perfect for this page. Uh, here I have an image from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. And um, these little bingo bits and cards. Um, I have them raised on the little puffy dots or puffy 
puffy pillow things. Um, let me grab it. This kind of thing. So it just lifts them up to give it more dimension. And then I just added ribbon. And here's just a piece of cardstock that, um, again, it's roughly about an inch thick. So at half an inch, I scored down it, cut the edges so they wouldn't come up to this, and, um, and glued it down on that and on that. And it's very sturdy. It's a, and I used a heavier cardstock because I just felt like with it coming upward like this, it needed something a little bit stronger. Um, so that worked well. Now here's this page again uh, on here. And it flips over here. And pretty much this is, is fairly close to everything you saw in early videos. Um, and then this is just muslin holding it onto the bottom page, and then that flips over onto that. Okay, this page, I haven't changed a lot other than I added, uh, this is a stamp uh, from, it's Lavinia Stamps. I purchased it, it was uh, an individual stamp um, through uh, Frantic Stamper, the Frantic Stamper. This, I put a, a quote, adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. And the only other thing on this page is that I added uh, another flip here. And I just added a little ribbon and just, uh, I think these are called bulb pins maybe. Just added a little one with a few beads on it because on this page, as I turn it here, uh, this page has a flip, and so I didn't want the bulb pin here to hang too long, or it was going to interfere with this. So that's something I, I had to kind of consider before just um, putting those on. And this page has pretty much stayed the same. This is a different uh, segment than I have shown yet. This was made from a recycled envelope. So think of just a, a white, you know, envelope that comes with other stuff in the mail where you can mail a check back in it, that kind of thing. Um, and all I did, and I did this a long time ago, it was just sitting in my stash. Uh, this is Medieval Mirage in the background. I just, you know, glued that down initially along with some scraps from other Medieval Mirage sets. And then I put the die cuts in. These are, um, actually they're not die cuts, they're from a digital set uh, from Dreams, etc. And I had cut them out. So inked them, inked the flowers, that kind of thing. And then just glued them on and Mod Podged the whole thing to keep it secure. And then stitched it. And it, you know, it has that opening there for the tuck. And then here is this side. And this is a, a Vermeer, uh, Vermeer uh, picture from a digital kit by Mrs. Cog. And so that was on there. And same thing with the front of this. It's pretty much all medieval mirage paper in the background. Um, when I stitched it, I added just some ribbon, some... Uh, you know, silky ribbon to it. And then I decided, okay, well, I'm going to use it in this. So I just punched three holes through it. And I've put these two um, cards that were left over from, you know, everything I've been making. And I just put them in there. And they're just sitting tucked in there like that. And then you flip it. And it's just another page in a big book. Here we have uh, this little flip that was just made from, I think, a scrap of, of like a mailer, a flyer. And I just decoupaged over it, um, added, what you'll mainly see in this video is more fibers added, you know, the, the ribbons and uh, that kind of thing. So that one is in previous videos. Added this, again, just some more kind of heavy-duty, um, if you call it ribbon or, um, 
you know, if it's from Joanne. So it's the kind of thing that might be sewn on um, a pillow. If you were making like throw pillows, that kind of thing. It's just a heavy duty um, textile. Here we're back to this page, um, backed up to that. And that's in an earlier tutorial as well. And here, uh, more of that heavy duty uh, rust colored um, ribbon. And on this page, I added the little um, tab up at the top, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, remember, here was this woman who, whether she's a prisoner or trying to imprison somebody, I'm not sure. Uh, I picked this color, though, of the trim just to pick up some of the tones of the wood um, and, you know, other kind of brownish colors on the opposite page. I put this up here because when you flip it, here is this coming into the way. And for a little tab to fit over this heavy-duty ribbon and onto this page, it was going to be pretty bulky. So I just put it up there as sort of a, a flag or, you know, to draw attention to the, the flip of the page. Here, these have been in my videos earlier. So I'll just, I love that one. You could even have it just on that side. Um, and we come onto this page. Here, I put a tab on and another one of those little bulb uh, pins with some little beads. And there's a little bit of sari silk. I chose just to pick up the green. Uh, it's just, you know, again, a remnant from, uh, in my last video, I talked about the sari silk. Uh, I think it's called a hank, and it comes all twisted. You can find this um, uh, from Silk Divine on Etsy. And I just cut off bits and pieces as I use them. So that flips there. And this has been in previous videos. Other than adding a little more ribbon to it, it's pretty much the same. I also added um, some stamped, again, uh, scraps of paper from old book pages that um, I've talked about at other times and added it just as an embellishment. The date is 1945 on it, which obviously doesn't work with this, but it, it doesn't matter. I was looking at the shape, the size of the image, just to add something there. And here it's like you have a, a princess or a young queen, and she's crowning her young man here. And I just um, added, again, some leftover cotton fabric to that and it tucks up and here we go turn the page this page I wanted to coordinate with this side so you'd see those big flowers the the red and the richness and that's kind of bouncing off the bird a little bit as well as this tag that uh, was made um, you know, again, everything I use, it's it's piecemeal. I make little bits and pieces here and there. Don't necessarily know where they're going to end up. And then as it was time to decorate this, I started to look through things and pull things out. You still have this in here. It has this fabric, uh, which is actually a torn up towel. This is some cheesecloth, I think, on that. And there you have that. For this one, I just added a little piece of sari silk just to draw attention to the fact that it is a, a page that's being turned. On this, I added, um, this is a, a new die I have, um, and it came from, I think this one was from, um, oh, what's it called? In Love Arts in love arts and they have all kinds of dyes and stamps and other things and they're very very reasonable in price i'm pretty sure this it's a bigger die and i just cut it apart to fit and that's sizzix die from
from uh, Tim Holtz collection of dies. So here I just wanted to kind of give it that feeling of brickwork and old architecture. And I also added a tab here, oops, just with some ribbon. Uh, no beads because again with the the page flipping here right there anything long would have interfered with that so I kept it pretty pretty simple um, you have these pages the greens and the the bursts of red um, being coordinated together simple flip here with um, muslin holding it. And the main difference on this page, I just again added some of those simple stamped um, bits from old book pages. I even have it here in a little grasshopper along with the, the eyelet with the red ribbon. This page, when I initially showed it, did not have the black uh, metalwork and I I just felt like without it, it, it needed something in contrast because the pinks and mauves and green and golds, it was too, like too soft. Nothing stood out. <clears throat> and so just like on that frame on the back of the binder, I just cut this piece apart and another one down here. And remember I mentioned those little pieces that fall out when you poke them out, those little swirls. I just added uh, those in the corners there again, just to sort of help frame the page. And here there's sort of like a, looks like a gathering, maybe it's a jousting event, um, and the word blossom there. Here is another envelope, and I've put two more Vermeer, um, pictures from Mrs. Cog's craft, crafts inside. Again, I just backed them with some fabric I had on hand, uh, and I'll put those back in in a minute. This was a recycled envelope, made it months ago, just was using up some papers I had from some other project. Again, more Mrs. Cog's uh, Vermeer uh, images and some uh, cutouts from dreams, etc. And it just flips. And then here you have um, this old woman, another Vermeer painting. Um, and maybe she's um, doing something with corn or, or wheat. I'm not sure what. Probably doing something um, to, in preparation of dinner. The pot is there and, and a bucket of something and whatever this is down here. But um, this again, you've got just the, the scrap paper in the back. Uh, I think this bloom might be Artie Mays. I think that's maybe from a kid of hers. I added the ribbon. Uh, again, this is just from a stamp that, it's a bunch of border stamps that I've had forever. I bought them a long time ago. And um, I just used them on those strips of old book page. And you ink the edges, and, and it just adds a neutral image that sort of helps tie the bigger picture together, maybe. Let's see, I'll put that there, and that can tuck there. I think having the fabric on the back of those helps them also kind of hold on as you turn the page, versus if it was a real slick paper surface. Uh, this page has a uh, little charm here that I made and just I added it to the ribbon uh, like I just put the one the opening of the bulb pin through that center of the ribbon um, so it would lay flat otherwise it was going to be kind of hanging in the way here and when you open this page uh, again a little bit of embellishment these are just like little beetles from a stamp set, again, the pine cones. And I have the geese flying in several pages in this. So that was sort of just drawing, again, that idea of nature into the pages. 
even though there's a lot of people in the pages. Okay, uh, muslin uh, hinge here. And then on this page, this is just um, a piece of paper I folded into essentially a, a rectangle um, and made a flip of it. You can see on Roxy Creations, um, she uses that technique for pockets for a lot of her journals. And that's where I learned to do it. I have just a quote down here, an eyelet with some green sari silk. And here we kind of have the king or the emperor, whoever coming to town. Um, you know, it's very uh, regal and exciting. You know, people are thrilled to see him. Here, uh, Red Lead Paperworks has some, their wood stamps, uh, wood mounted stamps that have um, like old sayings. And this is the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So maybe he's actually leaving the castle. Maybe he's going on some kind of a crusade or to a great battle. Um, but that's kind of what I had in my mind when I put that down. And also, um, this is just a, a stamped image from Red Lead Paperworks of a clock. And I just tucked it in to, to remind the viewer of the sense of time and time passing. And maybe life is short. Maybe, you know, thinking about what will, uh, what will happen on his journey. Who knows? Um, that's just another little image. This page is another type of flip that I hadn't shown yet. It's... It's similar to um, previous ones, except it just goes with one more flip. So it's like a double flip. So here was um, a card, a page, just, you know, very simple. I had with, you know, with the paper as I made this originally, I'd made a tuck. And again, I learned to do these um, from watching Rachel on Roxy Creations. And so I had actually made this piece the way it is here, just with the paper, months ago. And again, knew I'd use it at some point. I've just put a little medieval mirage on the back of that. And again, these images are from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. So I had that initial page. And I had another page just like it. Uh, with that little tuck space, except this wasn't there. And initially, I thought I'd have one on either side, you know. And I ended up deciding, because this thing was so packed full, I stitched the two back to back. And, of course, added a little extra in embellishment. But just made it, you know, a page with a front and a back. They both have tuck spaces. And then here I've got the green sari silk, the, the little beads, some sari silk here. Okay, but here is the next page. And with this one, again, it's just a basic collage. I added this little um, tab here as a reminder that this page also flips open there. So when I say I kind of like made a double flip um, that's what I mean. So here we have the geese again, um, the beautiful young woman. I'm not sure if this is the, the same commander as in that picture, maybe. But this one I wanted to have a feel of, of you know, magic and passion. And he's, he's awestruck by her beauty. And, um, you know, the, the red in the touch in the background is is to bring that out as well and then this on this side was a collage I had done before and again it was sitting in my in my stash waiting for a home and I just liked how just the colors with her dress and all it just picked up that the pink and the reds and the passion uh, with it and and also the nature 
This I had a uh, black card stock I made the hinge with, and it was sort of just too stark looking, just all black here. So I added one of those stamped edges, just like this kind of thing. I just added it there to to soften the hinge, the, the blackness of the hinge there. Okay. And so there you have that. And so again, it's up here. You have this and this. You flip it there, you have that and that, okay? And then this whole page flips here, and we're getting to the end. Um, all these have been in earlier videos. I added um, just a hinge, um, not a hinge, a tab here with a little black ribbon. I didn't want too many beads and to have it end up being sort of clunky and awkward. Uh, this page is just a, a cutout of one of the Vermeer paintings that I enlarged and then cut her out just to, to create some dimension and all. And then here, I think this is from uh, Beautiful Women, a collection of digital images from Far Mirage. I'm pretty sure is on Etsy where I found that. Um, we have this, a little bit of a die cut there. Um, again, just to, just to enhance it visually. And then this page, this was an, another old page, a lot of medieval mirage on hand. Um, from when I first started putting this whole, uh, book of collage together, I added this on top. There was an image that below it that it it didn't have to be a focal point so i just added this one it's sort of a a medieval shopping theme it looks like a, an old woman maybe her daughter and they're picking through the fresh vegetables putting them in their baskets um to take home to make a meal i have some it's sort of a nice metallic sort of gunmetal uh, sari silk that came in in the hank I showed you and I just added it there to to make it clearer that it was a flip and on this side there you can see it um, again a little bit of die cut some die cut added there this was another Vermeer uh, image that the overall image I just made it larger and then cut her out with the two men um, and this page, I just, I put this uh, quote, this is from, again, poppiness. If I had a flower for every time I thought of you, I could walk through my garden forever, Tennyson. And doesn't that seem like something, you know, he's obviously, you know, flirting with her or giving her a lot of attention. And, and you can see from her smile that, oh, she's very flattered and, and um, giddy, maybe even. And we have this picture uh, that I made earlier up there, sort of in contrast, because I thought this one I had three odd letters, and she's actually looking at music, but it made me think, you know, maybe, maybe she hasn't enjoyed the attentions the way this woman has, and she's a little miffed, possibly. And that's just, again, a, a silly narrative I make up in my mind as I place things together. This is a favorite page of mine. I only made it in the last week, and it just sort of came together on its own. We have this tag that I made a while ago, and I love the red and this bird, and there's this uh, washi tape image of a medieval woman. And here's the back page, which is a little more modern, but that's okay. And I, I had wanted a special place for it. And so when I made this page, I wasn't really thinking about this tag. But when this was done, I thought the reds really did a nice job here. And we have, looks like a fight or something has, you know, a, a broken out. Maybe the men are, are gambling. It looks like they're kind of playing cards uh, and so with that, this is a die cut from a bingo 
Oh, not a die cut. I'm sorry. This is an embossed bingo page, which is bigger. I just cut off some of the numbers to have on there. Just, you know, with the idea of maybe the men are, are gambling, somebody lost. Obviously, tempers are, are rising. Um, we've got the red of the tablecloth even kind of suggesting, you know, tension. And then I had this kitty cat with kind of a joker's cap. I think it's from graphics, the graphics fairy site, um, maybe under one of their digitals of, you know, with cats and dogs. I think that's where it came from. And I had printed it out a long time ago, cut it out, always wanted to use it. But I, it wasn't until this page that I was like, that's the page for it. Just the jokester in with, you know, the party, everything going on here. Uh, another bit of the bingo there. And up here I put revolutionary. And that's from, um, I think it's uh, Seth Apter, I'm pretty sure, is the one who has a set of stamps that are all words sort of defining different things. And he, it just struck me that that really worked with that page. So this tucks back in. And here we're on to the last segment here. Um, again, this page, I added this picture here. It's of like a queen and she's putting the crown on his head. And... Um, I liked this little scene. It, to me, it was very dramatic. And I put it, though, and it, this is sort of, of you know, darker idea of it, but maybe he's going on a crusade or a cause, and it says, you'll never come back alive. That is just one of those little Hardy Boy strips that I've talked about before on... Um, like here's an old Hardy Boy book that's cut up and I use it to ink on and things like that. And, you know, they always have titles. This is a book I'm just about, I've used it all. Here's the Phantom Freighter. And they're just the names of the chapters. And that particular one came out of a chapter that said, you'll never come back alive. But I just pieced it with that. I just thought it it just seemed fitting. Maybe this is what she's thinking, even though she won't say that to him. And uh, here's another piece from a Hardy Boy book from a chapter called The Phantom Freighter. And I just put a, a Day to Remember stamp from Red Lead Paperworks on that. Uh, this is uh, an owl stamp. I love this. It's from Carabelle Stamps. And I just put this on for the flip. And we open up, if you've been watching Instagram lately or some of my videos, you may remember I made this along with some other little um, little pieces in a video. Here we're from that same thing. And I made them, now oh, these are all book pages on back. Here you go. I had a bad, it was a day I was fighting with my printer and I was just getting all these bad prints and um let me see maybe that's it oh here you can see another one just really bad ink jobs and in fact i'm getting a, a new printer this week but um and you know again it can be so frustrating something when you times when you want to make something and the printer's not working or or something else you know it's just not coming together but you know if you hang in there You'd be amazed at the things you can can create out of, like I said, trash. Um, so this was done on just the back of one of those bad print jobs. And um, this one with the seagull and the seashells, and even though this is the desert, um, it had a feeling of the ocean. Maybe she's dreaming of the ocean. She's out in the hot desert. Um, I just felt like it worked with that. Here was the, the image I talked about it. It says, an icy dungeon changed at last. And when I first made this, it made me think of the beginning of spring, how you've come through winter and, um, and are eager, you know, just eager for the sunshine and, and things to grow. 
And down here again, we just have a Tim Holtz die cut and some embellishments, the flowers, dreams, etc. These two on the corners, I just cut down and um, put them on those puffy stickers to give it some dimension. So that flips. There's this red ribbon as a border. And we're on to the, to the last page here. And it has a flip. And you can see here I... I did put some beads, a little longer beads on this with some sorry silk. Uh, this is an earlier collage. Those clock pieces are in it again. And then it, it flips up. Let me move this side here a little. To this collage page, this is joined with muslin. And the last page in here is sort of a wedding scene. And... Um, I had taken this, one of the old books that I'm tearing apart has Shakespeare in it, and it was Now the Hungry Lion Roars from A Midsummer Night's Dream. And um, it it was just sort of fantastical. In the, in the image here we have, uh, it looks like an angel with his wings, um, and you have this beautiful procession happening. And the, po or the Shakespeare goes, Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf howls the moon, wilts the heavy plowman store, snores, sorry, all with weary task for done. Now the wasted brands do glow, while the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night that the graves all gaping wide. Everyone lets forth his sprite in the churchway pass to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team, Hecate's the goddess of the moon, from the presence of the sun following darkness like a dream. Now our frolic, not a mouse, shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. And I just, for me, for the end of this book, even though it really wasn't about um, fantastical things, for some reason, just that encompassing of nature and mankind and, and you know, just the, the amazing ways in which our world um, moves and exists, it, it just kind of encompassed all that for me. This is a little bit of um, ribbon up there. I don't know if ribbon is the right word. Um, very decorated ribbon. And then I also wanted it because, again, she is running in this image. And there's actually a little fairy here that got cut off when I put it together. It was too big. But that also, that tie between all of this page, you know, she running to catch up with this. Um, maybe it's not related at all, but I just felt like they went together well. And finally, then here in this pocket, which again, I, I showed in a previous video how to make the little hinges on it to lift it a little. This was another um, piece I made months ago, inspired by Roxy Creations, um, when I was learning how to do those tuck spots and and little tucks, you know, panels and things. And this is, I, I just added the images the other day to this. Here we have the women coming in from the wheat field. And I added the quote, may we be strong women. This is just um, a die cut um, that I cut in half. The circle, if you combine this with this, you know, you can see about how big it is. So I just cut it off in half to make the, the curve fit it. And then on this side, um, I had some birds, and and I added, this was one of my uh, Bad Print Day collages. I had him sitting there, uh, you know, just waiting to be used, so I glued him down on that. Mainly because I felt his colors went nicely with that bird. And then the inside, I added the embellishments. Um, this is that picture if you remember in the video earlier, and it, it's sort of like, uh, just a minute, knock at the door. I'll be done in a minute. Uh, I'm thinking this is the goddess of springtime, maybe, Persephone. 
and um you know this is sort of representative maybe death or someone sent from Hades to take her back down notice the beauty of blossoms and and everything here and it's just stark darkness here and if you know the story of Persephone she has to go down for half of the year because she ate from the pomegranate um when she visited the underworld and because she ate the seeds she has to return to the underworld as Hades um queen and when she goes her mother Demeter up on on um land on you know where the crops are she is so sad that she just stops helping the crops grow and that's how we get fall fall is when persephone has just left and things start to die and then winter is you know when demeter is very sad missing her daughter but then in spring persephone comes back out and we have new growth and summer and all of that. So if you think about it, I didn't even make the connection when I made this. Uh, this could be representative of Demeter. And she's the goddess of, um, of uh, growth and crops and prosperity. I think her Roman name is Ceres, C-E-R-E-S. So think of the word cereal. And cereal is made from grains. And so actually, without me even really planning it, that worked really well with this image of Persephone, possibly, inside. I put the word irresistible. It's kind of double meanings. Could mean, oh, the love these two feel is irresistible. But it could also mean it's just too tempting for this figure in black to not pull Persephone in, that irresistible draw to the underworld. And there you have it. Um, just a few other embellishments. And I just put the eyelid in with a little sari silk attached. And I just tuck it in here in the back. And you could have that be in the page, or in this case, I just chose this side um, and I wanted it so that the ribbon sort of stops it and uh, holds it about there. And then that is the end. And this is on the back page. So I hope you have um, enjoyed the process with this um, book of collage. It's something I actually thought about probably a year and a half ago, wanting